Okay, so today we're going to take a look at uh, compressions and expansions, which means we're going to look at how we can stretch and squish graphs. So the first one we're going to take a look at, I'll put it up on the software here so you can see it. Um, it is the graph whoops, um, y equals x times x plus 2, x minus 2. Let me just change this so it looks a bit more like yours. So you go from negative 3 to 3 and negative 7 to 7. Okay, so this is what the graph will look like uh, when you transfer it over to your page. So we'll just start by getting that onto the sheet. Here's a few good points. Um, there's one, obviously, at negative 2, 0, and 2. This point where the crosshair is, is, that's a pretty good one too. And so is the point down here. That's a pretty good one to use for when you're transferring it. So there, there, and then those 3 o'clock across the axes. So I'll do my best to... Something about like that should be enough to get it started. And it'll roughly look like that. Okay, so this is one we're going to compare it against. So before we go and put a 2 in front of everybody here, does anybody, uh, can anybody give me some sort of prediction as to what they think <coughs> is going to happen? It's going to stretch out this way. Excellent. How did you know that, Anthony? It just makes sense. Well, that's great if it just makes sense to you. But basically what we're saying is whatever we had before, we're now going to double it by multiplying by 2. So let's take a look on the, uh, we'll compare the two graphs together and see if that actually shows up here. And what I want you to notice, some people say the graph gets skinny. That's a side effect. It's kind of like, you know, if I wanted to realize my dream of playing in the NBA, then I'd have to be stretched to about 7 feet right now because at 5'9", uh, it's not going to cut it. But I would look very skinny if you took me from where I am now proportionally and it's, you know, stretched me up to 7 feet. So the graph looks skinnier, but that's not exactly what happened. If we want to talk about it exactly, what exactly happened was any point was doubled in height. So, for example, take any spot on the graph, like right here, where I'm at the height 2. So at 2, and if I double it, I end up at 4. So on the new graph, I'm twice as high. Okay, so I go from there up to 4. If I was before at the number 3, then I should expect to find it at the number 6, which I do. Okay? So everybody is doubled in height. The graph is twice as tall or twice as short, depending on if it's positive or negative. Okay, so here's the... Uh, So one thing that may help you kind of uh, remember this in your notes, you may want to end up drawing on here a couple of arrows. This is where I was before. You can go like that and put a little times two. This is where I was before. Put a little times, whoops. And then put a little times two. Okay. So um, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen now when we put the half in front? It should be pretty easy. Yeah, it's shorter. Okay. So then uh, you take uh, Kobe Bryant and you get Mr. Joyce. Let's see here. Well, I'm not quite half his height, so. Okay, so if we put the half in there, what gets affected is everything vertically. So, for example, I was at a height of 1 right here. So I was at a height of one. I'm now at a height of a half on the new graph because I had to shrink by a half. Where I used to be at two, which is up here, now I'm at the value one because I've shrunk by a half. Okay. So this new graph, when we transfer it down, basically we have the same key points. 
except they're being squished up. Again, it may help you in your notes if you have something here like this is where we started at three and we shrunk it down times by a half. And then same thing here, we were at three and we shrunk it by a half. Any questions so far? Can I just see if five is the worst thing we've encountered um, and one is the easiest, where are we at right about now? So I'll go a little bit quicker than to help speed it up. So let's talk about it. If we were kind of like a fraction, usually you'll see it like a half or a quarter or a third or something like that. Um, this graph is going to be compressed vertically. Sometimes you might hear the word shrink, so that's fine too. But usually you'll hear compression or compressed. Um, if we are a large number greater than one, something like uh, I don't know, two, three, etc. It could even be something like three and a half. That would be still a number greater than one. Then we're going to have an expansion happen. So that's the language you'll hear in our text and the uh, exams and things. Well, I guess to be grammatically correct, I should say expanded. Expanded. Okay. And uh, what we call this, if we put a letter A in front, that's the one our textbook uses, so we're going to stick with it. Um, if we put this letter A in front of the function, we call this the vertical stretch factor. Okay. And, you know, if, if you really like to punish yourself, you can write out vertical stretch factor every time you do stuff in your homework, or I'm willing to accept VSF. Now, if you do decide to shorten it, I have no problems with you shortening it on any of your homework, your tests, or your quizzes. Please don't be lazy on your provincial exam. I don't know that your marker's ever heard of VSF. Hopefully they can figure it out. But uh, if you do this on your provincial, I can't guarantee that you'd get full points. So please, in that situation, write the whole thing out. Okay, um, so like we had done last day, if we were on the point X, Y, where do you think we are now if we stick an A in front? That's correct. So we are now at x, a, y. Okay. So we're going to take a look at parabolas again, something that you were uh, hopefully familiar with. Let's see if you can predict what's going to happen in this situation. Okay. Now, uh, the first one, we don't even we don't need the software for this, right? We can probably handle it. This is. Uh, sketch of the parabola. And we're going to try to figure out what's going to happen now if we replace x with 2x. Okay. Now, what does your intuition kind of tell you? What do you think is going to happen? Anybody brave enough to take a guess? Sure, Connor. Um, think, think horizontally, right? Because we're, we're affecting x in this case. Um, it's going to do stuff to the height in this case too. But um, let's talk horizontally because we're trying to think about when we attach something onto x. So you're, you're right about it getting higher, but let's talk horizontally. Yes, Julie. Is there a thing to plot because it's two heights? So the, the, what used to be 2 is now going to become 4. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. So that means, it, you know, if it was 2 and it's now it's 4, 2 squared versus 4 squared, like Connor said, is much higher up on the graph. But um, I'm not sure that still kind of gives us some idea what's going to happen. So I want you to try to make a guess in your head. See if you can figure out, like, is this graph going to then move wider or shorter and by how much? And then we'll see, uh, see what this software shows. So um, let me just fix this again so it's a bit more like yours. Uh, and then it's to negative 1 to 9. Okay, so there's the original graph. 
And if I replace this with 2x, OK. OK, honestly, how many people saw that coming? Really? Good, OK. Um, the, what I'm looking for, though, most specifically, yes, it, gets, it, it tends to look like it's stretched up higher. But in general, what we see happening here is the graph has gotten skinnier. Right? We want to talk about it horizontally because it's affecting x. So if you notice, right here, where I'm at the point 2 on the original graph, in the new graph, which is here on the value 1, that means I had to go from 2 to 1, which is half of what it used to be. Okay, if we try it again, like say I'm at the number 1 right here, if I was at the number 1, I had to shrink in by a half. On the new graph, I'm now at half of 1 or, or half. Okay. Why does it have to shrink it? Why is it doing that? There's multiplication by 2. Why do you think it has to shrink itself by a half? Think about those two numbers. Why does it shrink by a half when you stick a 2 in front? This is a, one of the tougher ones to think about, but why? Why does that happen? You're correct. You try and use it. Just, just talk about x for me. Why, when I put in um, 2, when I try to double the value of x, it makes everybody squish in by a half? Because the x is squished by 2 and you only have a negative 2. <laughs> so why is the 2 in front of the x doesn't even add up to 2? Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I think the easiest way to think about it is like this. If I want to know where I would have come from if this has been doubled, then to undo the doubling, I have to half it, right? If I want to get back to where I started, half times 2 gets me back to 1, right? It's the reciprocal, so it evens itself out. So, for example, if I put in the number 2... Hey, are we recording? Yeah, we are uh, recording. Oh. <laughs> so, for example, if I put in x equals 2, okay, then in this graph... To get the same value, I only need to put in x equals 1, right? Half the value will give me the same result on the graph. So I have to shrink it by a half horizontally in order to get back to where I started. Okay? So this is about where the values would end up. I'd be here. I'd be at a half. A half. Oops, sorry. Doing the wrong one. Um, I'd be at uh, a half 1. Okay. 